Greetings, Sony Tangents, it's me, James, your BA Sensei, back with another Power Query tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be looking at looping and recursion in Power Query. So the data set we're looking at here, various stock codes as rows, and then we got various portfolios as columns. And each one of these values represent the number of stocks within each portfolio. What we want to do is, I want to iterate through each of these columns, right, and do a percentage of the total. So I want to... Con convert this to a percentage like in this destination table over there. You can see translating to a percentage of whole. And I want to iterate through each column without hard coding any of these values. Well, let me show you how to loop. Okay, step one, click on your data set, go to data, say from table or range. This will open it in Power Query. Now you have Power Query open. It added a step there called change type that detects your data types. And you can see all of these are detected as whole numbers, which is correct because it's the amount of stock. The function I'm going to show you first is called table transform columns, which is handy because it can basically you be used to transform any existing column in a table. All right, so let's quickly say table transform columns. And in this case, I'm telling it that's the table. I want to transform in curly brackets portfolio one column. Yes. And I want to say each, let's say I want to go and for each value in portfolio one, I just want to have the list sum of the total value of each column in there. So let's just say list sum, give me the list sum, right? List sum needs a list. So I'm saying portfolio, the table is called change type and I want to look at portfolio one. And that's going to give me the sum of all the stocks in that portfolio, which is great. Okay. But what I want to do is I want to say, right, underscore, which represents each current value inside of each row. I want to divide by the total amount. And that's going to give me a percentage of the total holding of each stock inside of portfolio one. Right. So this is what we want to achieve with the iterator. We want to take this formula, table transform columns and iterate through one, two, three, four, five, six, anything that starts with the keyword portfolio, we want to iterate through it. So we're going to hold on to this. I'm just going to rename this to transform function. Okay, let's add a new step. Now that we know that. So now in order to start with the iterator, we just refer back to change type over there. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to show you kind of like how we want to iterate through these columns because you want to iterate through everything that starts with the keyword portfolio as a column. We want to ignore stock code. So how do we do that? So first we're going to use a thing called table column names, and that's going to give us all of the column names in a list like that. But now my rule is I only want to iterate through columns uh, that start with the keyword portfolio. I want to exclude the stock code. So how do I do that? If I add portfolio eight, nine, 10, it should also be added. So how I do that is I say list select because this is a list. The list we have is this list and my selection criteria is simply each row in this list, right? I'm going to say text contains the underscore. So the value inside of each row in this list um, contains the word portfolio. Now the problem is this is case sensitive. What if they spell a portfolio all with lowercase or with all uppercase? So let's make sure that the comparer ordinal case is ignore case. And that's a close your bracket out. And there you go. Now you have a list of all the things that we need to iterate through all the columns we need to iterate. through. Let's rename this to selected columns. We are basically ready to use list accumulate. But before that, let's quickly show you how list accumulate works. Let's start a new query, blank query. And in here, I'm going to create a new list. One, two, three, four, five. So we have a list of five numbers. What I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly use list accumulate list accumulate just to demonstrate how it works. We're going to start with a list. This is the list of five numbers. We want to seed. So seed basically means where do you want to start? I want to start at the value of one. That's that very first value. Now we need to declare a uh, accumulator. The accumulator works in two ways. It has a state variable and a 
current variable. And I'm just gonna, I'll show you now what that means, but you always need to declare the two. You can give them any names, but the first one is always the state, and the second one is always the current, right? And what I wanna say is, let's say state times my current. Close it out and say, okay. It gives you a value of 120, but what does that mean? How did you get to a value of 120? This is what happens in that case. So each one of those numbers, one, two, five. We iterate step one, two, five. Your current value is what you're currently at. So we're at value one. Your state stores your current state, the result of your loop. So your current is one, your state is one. So your answer for your first step is one. So now in your next step, the state is stored as the value of one, but your current number is two. So one times two is two. So now your state is set as two, but your current is three. So three times two is six. Six is your state. Four is your current number is 24. 24 is your state. Your current value is five and that you're sitting with the 120, right? So there you go with the 120. In this case is we want to take each of these columns. So the current, let's say the current column is portfolio one, right? And it's justified with all of these columns, column one, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to loop through this list but apply to these columns. We're going to say column one is our current state and it's our current value. So now the next state would be, your current would be portfolio two, but your state is column one and two, and then three, that's your state, and your current, one, two, and three together is your state. And you're going to iterate through all of that. That's what we're going to do this. Let's go back here and let's say, excellent list accumulate. We want to start with a list. That list is the list of columns, so one to seven. That's why we created that function. Where do we want to start? What is our seed? Our seed is simply our table that we want to start with. Okay. So now we need to declare the state and the current, but I'm going to give them different names, more descriptive names. I'm going to say state table columns, and then I'm going to say current column and do a little rocket ash. Okay, I'm just going to press enter, it's going to break, but I'm going to go back to my transform function. I'm going to copy this one out. Just copy that transform function right there. Come back here and then paste it in here. Right now we're going to modify this thing to use the iterator router. So this first one we say, oh, we don't want to start with the change type the table there. We want to use the state table columns. You replace that one. Our hard-coded portfolio name is, we don't need that anymore. We just need to replace that with our current column. Shift and space here to create more space. This still remains the same. You're underscoring your divide by. Your list sum remains there. What we're gonna do here is for hard-coding this column name, you see that's a list for each column. I'm just gonna replace that with table, column, right? And I'm going to refer to the change type over there because that's the table we're working on, right? And the column we're referring to is actually your current column. And you close all of that out and that should work. There you go. Isn't that beautiful? So we've literally just transformed it. We took the function, the transform function, and we iterated through every single one of those things all in one step, just understanding how list accumulate works. So let's quickly bring that back. And there you go. Let's quickly do a test. Let's add portfolio eight, add some values. Let's refresh this guy. And like magic, there you go. There's your solution. As you can see, Looping in Power Query is not as simple as one might think. It's not as simple as it is in Python, certainly. You need to understand the dynamics of states and current and list accumulate. There are some other iterator functions, but I hope this video helped you to open your mind how you can use an iterator like list accumulate to help you do things in a much more efficient way. VA Sensei, signing out.